All right, guys, today we're going to be making a water snake fishing lure. Now, I decided to tackle this project because a couple weeks ago, while I was bow fishing real early in the morning, I noticed a snake on the other side of this inlet, and it had just gotten in the water. It wasn't too big, maybe a foot long, and it started swimming from one inlet to the other, and it was about a 30-foot journey, and as it was going across the water, I figured, hey, I'm not the only one seeing this, right? There's got to be some other fish that's going to try to take a snap at it. So I was really excited I was going to get to see some cool nature action. And sure enough, about halfway through that snake's journey, a gar rose up from the bottom of the river and it took a snap at the snake. Now the snake got away scot-free and the gar was probably hungry for another couple hours. But it was a really cool experience for me, you know. Normally I only get to see that stuff on Animal Planet or Discovery Channel. But it also got me thinking... I could probably make something that could simulate a snake and then I could try to catch a gar on a rod and reel which I've never done before. So that's what this video is about. So here I just chucked up a piece of sassafras and I know it's not the hardest wood out there but I figured it would work for this purposes. This is mainly a proof of concept to see if it'll work. But before we start turning that, we're going to sharpen up our chisels. Now the first step in this process is to turn this piece of square stock into round stock which is the most labor intensive step and then we'll just make it look like a snake. So as you can kind of see, I marked out where I want this segments to end and that's where I'll cut it off with a bandsaw and everything else should look generally like a snake. Then after that we'll smooth everything out with some rough sandpaper and then chop it out with the bandsaw. Now to make this piece of wood look more like a snake and not like a little piece of wood that got turned on a lathe, we're going to run it across the belt sander and try to turn the circular head into a flat triangle kind of shape. Now I've put a piece of fine grit sandpaper on my diamond stone which should be pretty much perfectly flat and I'm just going to clean up the ends of all of my segments of the snake. Mm -hmm. 
After that, I drilled a small hole in the front and back of each segment and we'll thread an eyelet in through each of those holes. We'll end up taking them out later whenever we put some color on these pieces, but just for now we're going to make sure that everything dry fits correctly. Now to hold everything together, we'll put these rings on each of the eyelets except the front piece which is at the tip of the snake's mouth because that will connect to our fishing line or swivel. Everything else gets one of these rings, that way it holds it together and also we can put hooks on those rings so we can actually catch fish. Now I thought about painting these guys which would be tedious and there's also a chance that the paint could fall off with time. So I decided I would burn all the segments and I did that just by waving a low torch on the surface of all the segments except for the front and back which don't really need it. Now the thing that you have to watch out for is the fact that the rings that wood grows in uh, they burn at different rates so you kind of got to keep an even flame throughout the whole process. Now the really charred and burnt parts of this wood is going to wear off, uh, so I figured I might as well take that off with some sandpaper. That way our clear coat that we put on later can stick to nothing but good solid sassafras wood. Now we're going to make this lure look a little bit more realistic by burning little rectangles in each of the segments in a checkered pattern. And you'll see what I'm talking about a little bit later, but basically, carefully I'm going to heat up this piece of metal and then just barely touch it to the wood and like I said earlier we'll put it in a checkered pattern so it looks sort of like a water snake and guys you really got to be careful if you're applying pressure to the wood with a really hot piece of metal you're doing it wrong so that's the snake I'm going for and that's the pattern that I got and I think it's all right it's not bad for burnt wood And lastly, I'll touch up every little piece with some 500 grit sandpaper, and then we'll put a clear coat on. So this is what we're looking at once we put hooks on, and now it's time to try it out in the Merrimack River.